You're watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Jim Fitzpatrick with CBT News. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Data continues to make headlines these days, and every business, including auto retail, is depending on it to help them grow their bottom line. But very few dealers I talk to, and I'm guilty of this as well, understand exactly how data is actually being used across their operation. Our friends at Cox Automotive have a new study called the Power of Data Study that explores that question. Here to walk us through that study's findings and the opportunities within is Chase Abbott, Vice President of Sales at Cox Automotive. Welcome back, Chase. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me, Jim. Great to be back with you again on CBT. Sure. So uh, let's start with why Cox Automotive conducted the Power of Data study. Yeah, so look, Cox Automotive uh, has a long-standing commitment to digital innovation in automotive retail, starting with AutoTrader all the way back in 1997 when you know, I was a sophomore in high school and was transitioning off of tight rolling my jeans. So that, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, and, and all of that data that we hear so much about today is kind of really where digital innovation starts and that includes insights on what my customers are doing predictions on what they might come out with out of the wash and and really automation to help the human component make sure that nothing falls through the cracks and data can really help kind of get things done uh, at a dealership and, and in order to kind of keep expanding on that legacy of bringing car buyers and sellers together uh, we knew we needed to better understand how dealerships are using that data and kind of the value they put behind it or not. And so we conducted a study. Now, this is over 393 franchise dealerships and 191 wow. employees that is inclusive of dealership management, uh, sales and service. So we tried to hit the broader yeah. communication there. Sure. And the study really revealed some important foundational factors affecting the dealership usage of that data and kind of led us to an aha about omni-channel car buying, which just basically means, uh, you know, meeting a, a customer where they are and connecting the dealership with the consumer on kind of all possible purchase paths. So you're going to hear more about this in the next few months, but uh, around omni-channel car buying, but I think a the dealers right now can learn a lot from the study about how that stuff's valued today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, data gets things done at a dealership. Um, talk to us about that. Yeah, so look, today's dealers, look, they know there's power in data. I think it was a tagline in data like 2017 or something, big data, right? It was everywhere. Um, and, and four out of five dealers agree that data can help them, right? Forecast trends, it can help capture demand, generate demand, become more efficient, get bigger gross profit. But 83% of dealerships have access to data insights via some kind of dashboard or some kind of reporting, but less than a third of them are actually satisfied that the insights that they get from their vendors and satisfaction improves somewhat when you look at in-house operations, but only 36% of dealerships actually have an employee on staff dedicated to data analysis, right? Mm -hmm. So. Dealerships who use data tend to look at customer lead data, and that's, you know, what the customer's giving you, credit history, vehicle valuations, sure. uh, you know, dealership operational data, mostly coming from vendors and partners. But, you know, dealers some, sometimes can collect that info themselves or, you know, can receive it from OEMs. And the, the study findings, while the dealerships face some real challenges, uh, those who strive to leverage that data and really, you know, put in the work, if you will, are enjoying uh, real benefits and we haven't there's a lot going on here so i do want to uh mention that we do have an ebook going on for this so that they can kind of reference it at a later date mm -hmm. and hopefully we can share that but it's on our cox auto inc website okay backslash retail backslash power of data where they okay. can get a little bit more in tune with what yeah, that we'll, study said. we'll have a link right underneath the video that you're oh. watching folks so um of those challenges that you talked about what are, are there solutions to them yeah, I mean, there are a few um, that, that's going on right now. And the, the two big problems that we saw in the study was, one was lag in real-time data. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to land? Mm -hmm. and, and the other was just conflicting data sets. So there are solutions for these. Um, and the you know, and I'll start with the first one, uh, real-time lag. Mm -hmm. and, and look, four out of five dealerships receive the customer lead data from vendors and partners. Right. And the, the issue is it might be stale by the time it gets to them. So if you've got, you know, that thing flying around for a week or two before it lands and a customer may have been looking at sedans and you follow up 
immediately when you get that lead. But the, the technically the lead is a week or two old based yeah. off of that transmission online. They might be looking for SUVs today. Yeah, and you right. might be following up on the wrong car or missing an opportunity or not converting at a higher rate uh, because you're just simply not being relevant to what's actually going on with the customer in real time. And that can create a negative experience. So yeah. we even had a quote, Jim, that said uh, one of the dealers actually verbatim. Uh, if you're pushing and pulling data across platforms and sources, you run the risk of not being up to date. And, and that is 100% what some of the dealer feedback I have is, is what's right, what's wrong, what do I do, how do I read it, and where do I go from here? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no question because that, that is kind of the juggernaut right there for stores, for dealerships that are out there that uh, if they're not getting that, the, the correct data in a, in, a, in a suitable amount of time, uh, you're in trouble because that, that customer's probably already driving if you're calling them back a week later, right? That's right, right? Yeah. You're late to the party, right? In a, in a business where FQRs or first quality responses are heavily weighed, it's important to be, you know, the early bird getting the worm there when it comes to customer experience. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no question about it. So um, I can definitely see where the data is bridging the gaps that, that can derail, you know, a deal. Um, and, and anyone who's sold cars for a living, which I can attest to, uh, that timing is everything. What about the other challenges that you mentioned? Yeah, so the other one was data inconsistency, right? I saw this on a social media post the other day where they had a, G, a GM meeting around all the, the group and none of their data matched on, on what how many they sold or what their gross profit was. And so, you know, there's a lot of data out there today uh, coming from many different sources and it is bound to conflict at certain times, right? And there's all kinds of reasons for this, you know, lack of APIs between the programs that you're using. Does the integration actually make it over to the other side? Different departments not working together. Um, third party data that doesn't match up. Even human error, good old human error uh, is still <laughs> a problem uh, in there with when it comes to data entry. So oh, sure, yeah. When, when we, when, you know, when that staff is presented with all that conflicting data, it, you know, a lot of them, like I said, they don't feel equipped to figure out which piece of it's right because every vendor is saying mine's right. And, and how do you, get that into actual action or behavior change with the staff to really mitigate whatever risk that might that data might present. So the solution here really is intelligent automation and, and automation in every sense of the word to take out some of the human element and to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks and we put out a, our best foot forward, if you will, every time. So I'll give you an example of what that looks like. So if a known customer comes onto the website we know they, you know, if, they, if they're a known customer, they've converted with us before. So we're kind of watching what they're doing with all of our first party sites like AutoTrader, Kelly Blue Book, Dealer.com. Sure, sure. Let's say they start looking at sedans. We can automate an alert that lets in the CRM, that lets that salesperson know that might have sold that customer before that they're actively shopping and it logs that in the record. And then let's say that customer continues to browse over the next week. They hit the dealership website again. Mm -hmm. They're going at their speed. Right. Um, any salesperson right there, we can take an automotive uh, automated marketing platform and drop a one-to-one -one relevant email based off the car that they were clicking on. So it hits that relevance and really make them an offer on that vehicle. And if they don't wow. respond to that offer, which it happens even with increased relevancy, um, we can actually have an automated text sent to that customer to remind them that they got that one-to-one -one offer to them and hope to help you know convert that customer into yeah. an actual sale yeah. all of that's taking place in an automated fashion without much human engineering behind it and i think that's when you start to see real return it's just it's hard to create relevance i used to do a stuker box and my phone cards and i'd write thank you notes to every car i sold it just did not scale I couldn't do it. And and so now being able right. to use that, not in the post-sale process, but in the pre-sale process right. and, and help you understand what's really going on with the customer based off of what they're, not just what they submitted to you, but their entire journey that is uh, and, and what they put out there. Yeah, that is incredible. I mean, you really brought brought this down to a science, you know, rather than uh, to, your, to your point, you know, the, the old school of, uh, trying to track right. those customers down and, and follow up with them and what have you. I mean, this is truly amazing. So, wow, this is a lot to, uh, to digest, but, but important new information for all dealers to be taken into account for sure, especially as our industry, you know, tries to build momentum and to close out, you know, the, this year and restart 2025. So, uh, Chase Abbott, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Very much appreciate it. Of course, Chase is Vice President of Sales at Cox Automotive. And uh, thanks so much for sharing your insights.
Obviously, for dealers out there, if you're looking for a solution, Cox Automotive is a great place to start. This kind of information that you, you shared with us today, Chase, is just unbelievable. It really is. This is something I highly recommend dealers look further into. So uh, we'll, we'll provide all the information here as to how to uh, link up with them. Yeah, by all means, Jim, thank you for having me once again. If anybody has questions, they can hit me up on LinkedIn and I look forward to doing our next one whenever that may come, sir. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick.